Hello students. Welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Mini Singh from the Department of Biotechnology of Punjabi University, Patiala. In this module, we will talk about foods and nanotechnological interventions part one and will focus on nutraceuticals and their limitations under the paper of nanobiotechnology. Nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals are health promoting factors which are naturally present in food. The reason, the how can we separate or understand the nutraceuticals vis-a-vis -vis difference from pharmaceuticals? They, they, nutraceuticals draw their name from pharmaceuticals. Suticals meaning something that has the ability to cure. But in pharma, these are used, what we use are certain synthesized drugs. Whereas in nutra, we use components which are naturally present in, in, in food. Therefore, the term nutraceuticals. We know from in the Indian traditional systems various foods that have been used for their healing properties. We have also we particularly know about the use of healthy. It is also said and it is proven that the consumption of fruits and vegetables on a regular basis helps prevent the occurrence of certain diseases. This is a well-known fact. But as scientists, we now know what are the bases behind these, these sayings. The basis behind these sayings is the occurrence of nutraceuticals. In this module, we will understand what nutraceuticals are. We will take certain specific examples of particularly three classes, that is limonoids, carotenoids, uh, and polyphenols. We will also understand what are the limitations posed by these. When we talk about limitations, we are talking about whether we are, com we are completely utilizing the potential of these nutraceuticals and if not, what are the challenges which are being posed. Therefore, this uh, module has been designed with the following objectives. The first, we will briefly talk about food and nutraceuticals in that what are the natural bioactives which are present in food which are imparting the nutraceutical character to the food and since we are saying it is imparting the nutraceutical character, which means they are having certain specific health benefits. We will talk about the specific health benefits which are posed by limonoids, carotenoids, polyphenols, and in particular, a particular polyphenol called curcumin. The limitations in the use of these nutraceuticals, the first limitation and the foremost limitation being their bioavailability and how nanotechnology is used as a tool to overcome these limitations. It has been known from times immemorial that food has been a medicine for man. This was, and this has been proven scientifically too. Fruits and vegetables are an important source for daily intake due to the healthy constituents present in them, in particular the vitamins, the minerals, and a wide variety of phytochemicals. These phytochemicals, which are found in fruits and vegetables, are secondary metabolites and are bioactive molecules which are capable of protecting against diseases and producing a physiological health benefit. It is based on this fact that it is said that consumption of fruits and vegetables keeps at bay certain diseases such as cancer. Nutraceuticals are defined as food or part of food that provides physiological health benefit and helps in preventing, curing or treating a chronic disease. Sometimes this term nutraceuticals and functional foods are used interchangeably, the main difference being in the mode of consumption. Nutraceuticals are generally consumed in the form of tablets, pills, capsules, whereas functional foods are consumed in the form of food only. We have seen the availability of a lot of nutraceuticals and functional foods which are available in the market. In particularly, the nutraceuticals which are available in the form of capsules such as omega-3 fatty acids, sea cod liver oils or even beta-carotene and lutein and cryptoxanthin capsules. The table here enlists the bioactives which are key sources of nutraceutical compounds, their source from where they can be found and their potential health benefits. Broadly, these bioactives can be classified into ter terpenoids and polyphenolic compounds with yet another category of dietary fibers. Talking about terpenoids, lycopene is that nutraceutic which is prevalent in tomatoes. The red color of tomatoes is due to the presence of lycopene 
and it is known to have anti-cancerous properties. Lutein is another terpenoid which is prevalent in corn, avocados, egg yolks and spinach. It has very significant antioxidant properties and also protects against cancer. Beta-carotene, beta-cryptoxanthin, zeaxanthins, these are also present in carrots, oranges, corn and avocados and they all have very significant antioxidant activity and neutralize the free radicals which renders them anti-cancerous in nature. A recent compound which is finding a lot of application and understanding in the scientific community is limonin. Limonin, the component which causes bitterness in juices, it is present in juice as well as in seeds and it has very significant anti-cancer properties and its hepatoprotective properties are also being explored. The dietary fibers which are, which are nutraceuticals which we find commonly in our homes are oats and whole grain foods. They are anti-cancerous, they aid in digestion. Another class of compounds which is highly nutraceutic in nature are the polyphenolic compounds and amidst these polyphenolic compounds come categories of flavanones, flavanols and thocyanins phenolic acids. Green tea which is gaining a lot of popularity amidst populations is prevalent or is popular because of the presence of these polyphenolic compounds which are antioxidant and, and therefore anti-cancerous in nature. Anthocyanins which are present in blueberries, blackberries, black grapes, they too are anti-cancerous in nature. Curcumin is a very significant bioactive, a nutraceutic which is present in turmeric and it has been known in the traditional Indian system of medicine for acting as an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and has now also reached the phase 3 level of clinical trials merely attributed to its nutraceutical properties. Let us look at some of these nutraceuticals in details. Limonoids, as said before, are a class of chemicals which is very rich in citrus fruits. It is not so popularly known yet, but these secondary metabolites, which are present in the seeds, fruits and pulp of citrus fruits, including lemons, pomelos, lime, oranges, grapefruits and, and mandarins, are a group of highly oxygenated triterpenoids which are anti-cancerous as well as hepatoprotective in nature. We have just understood the role of limonoids as a nutraceutical component. New limonoids which have found prevalence in lemons, in citrus peels, seeds as well as the pulp. However, we also will subsequently know the limitations. But before we understand the limitations, let us see the importance of these limonoids. Limonoids in particular have been reported extensively to have anti-cancer properties. When we say anti-cancer properties, the reports are in particular towards breast cancer cell lines and as well as in tumor, uh, colon tumor uh, genesis, which means consumption of limonoids has the ability to inhibit these kinds of cancers. And limonin is also an active inhibitor in the promotional phase of carcinogenesis, which tells us that limonoids are very effective anti-cancer agents. We will see subsequently, we are talking about natural nutraceuticals or nutraceuticals which are present in food, which have a very high antioxidative character. It is because of that antioxidative character that lends it an anti-cancer property. But in case of limonoids, they are not extensively antioxidative, but they are extensively anti-cancerous in nature and therefore find their place as an important nutraceutical. Understanding the importance of limonoids, it is important for us to be able to utilize its benefits. Looking at the structure of two important limonoids, one is limonin and nominin, we look at the highly oxygenated ring structures of these molecules. On the right side of the, of the images, we see the glycosylated forms which are aqueous soluble. The second class of nutraceuticals which are very important are the carotenoids. In carotenoids, the carotenoids are further classified into carotenes and their oxygenated counterparts, which are xanthophylls. If you see in nature, there are certain fruits and vegetables which are red in color, and there are certain fruits and vegetables which are slightly yellow. 
So by looking at the fruit, we can tell whether these, whether the components, the nutraceutical components are fall under the category of carotenes or the xanthophylls, which are their oxygenated cut counterparts and are slightly yellow in color. Let's say we're looking at a tomato. The red color of tomato is attributed to the presence of lycopene, which is a carotene. The red color of carrots is attributed to the presence of beta carotene and it, the beta carotene draws its name from carrot itself. On the other hand, when we look at oranges, they are yellow in color, the surface is yellow in color. If we look at mandarins, they are yellowish orange in color. So by looking at it, we can say that the class of carotenoids which are present in those are the xanthophylls, which are the oxygenated forms of carotenes. All these carotenoids have extensive nutraceutical property and their main nutraceutical character is because of their antioxidative capacity. It is this antioxidative capacity that lends it the anti-cancer property and therefore carotenoids also are considered as a very important nutraceutical which is present in nature. Carotenoids which have been established as very significant nutraceutics present in nature and in foods are further classified into carotenes, which are red in color, beta carotene from carrots, alpha carotenes, gamma carotenes, and lycopenes, as in tomato, and their oxygenated counterparts, which are xanthophylls, which are more yellow in color. The xanthophylls prevalent in nature are beta cryptoxanthin in oranges and mandarins, lutenes in corn, zeaxanthin and violaxanthin, again present in different forms of corn. The carotenoids are tetraterpenes which belong to a large family of isoprenoids and form one of the most important classes of plant pigments. Animals are unable to synthesize carotenoids de novo and rely upon the diet as a source of these highly bioactive compounds with remarkable antioxidant activity. A very significant nutraceutic property of these carotenoids is their pro-vitamin A property which means that when consumed and when absorbed by the body they convert into vitamin A. It is based on this that the, the consumption of carotenoids is considered important for maintaining the health of eyes. Let us look at the certain specific health benefits of carotenoids. The major uh, health benefits of carotenoids are their pro-vitamin A capacity, which means when we are consuming carotenoids and when they go inside the body, they have the capacity to turn into vitamin A. Therefore, they are called pro-vitamin A carotenoids. The three main pro-vitamin A carotenoids are beta carotene, alpha carotene, and beta cryptoxanthin. Beta cryptoxanthin is an oxygenated counterpart of beta carotene and falls under the class of a xanthophyll. Carotenoids are beneficial in preventing age-related macular degeneration. It is this forms the basis of what has been said that if you, if you consume a lot of carrots, that means if you're consuming a lot of vitamin A, your eyes will be protected. Therefore, a high consumption of carotenoids in the form of a natural nutraceutical will always aid in preventing uh, any sickness or degeneration of macular de degeneration in the eyes. If mac the, the importance of this application lies in the fact that macular degeneration can further lead to blindness, which is irreversible. Therefore, consumption of bioavailable carotenoids, which can be done by using nanotechnological interventions, of which we will understand in the next module, are an important aspect of, of preventing certain diseases such as these. Carotenoids are by far identified as the most powerful antioxidants only in comparison with polyphenolic compounds. We will also come to polyphenolic compounds a little later in the module. Further to that, carotenoids have the ability to boost the immune system. This also lies, this is also the basis of the fact when we used to hear that if you consume an, appro an appreciable amount of fruits and vegetables, the incidence of sickness will be less. Lycopene is yet another significant nutraceutic which is present in tomatoes. As said before, the red color of lycopene of tomatoes is attributed to the presence of lycopene. Lycopene is another, is another terpenoid which protects against prostate cancer, breast cancer, atherosclerosis 
and associated coronary artery diseases. It reduces the low density lipoprotein oxidation and helps in reducing cholesterol levels in the blood. Structurally, lycopene is an unsaturated acyclic hydrocarbon and contains 13 double bonds out of which 11 are conjugated. The reason why we are iterating upon this fact is because it is this structure which is subsequently going to lend it a limitation. Looking at the structure of lycopene, if you, a, a careful look at this structure shows the carbon skeleton, the hydrocarbon skeleton. When, when we compare the hydrocarbon skeleton with that, and this structure below, which appears below the structure of lycopene, has similarity. The two structures are carbon skeletons. The structure below is that of a lipid. Therefore, it is not difficult to realize that the structure of lycopenes or carotenoids, which matches very much with the structure of lipid-like molecules, which is again rendering them the limitation. Carotenoids are lipid soluble, is something that we have just established, and hence possess poor aqueous solubility. And because of this, they have a low bioavailability. The small intestine absorbs carotenoids by mucosa via passive diffusion, and they get packaged into chylomicrons. The resulting chylomicrons are rapidly taken up by the liver. The liver secretes carotenoids associated with hepatic very low density lipoproteins. The figure shown depicts very clearly the limitation of carotenoids in the absorption by the human intestinal cells. The vesicles shown on top and the mesels shown on top and the protein depicted in blue color showing are showing that carotenoids can be absorbed by the human intestinal cells only in these forms, whether in a vesicular form, in a macellar form, or with the bound to a protein. On the extreme right, there is then arrow depicting C, which shows the passive diffusion of carotenoids inside the cells. Extreme left is shows a dotted arrow upwards, which is also showing that whatever part of carotenoids is absorbed inside the cell, it has all possi possibility to be effluxed outside as well. It is these limitations that, that have led the scientists to develop alternates for adding value to these nutraceutics. A class of nutraceutics which have gained a lot of importance recently are the flavonoids because of their powerful antioxidant properties, which is further lending them their anti-cancer properties, cardiovascular protection, hepatoprotective protection, and their in inflammatory properties. Yet again, though they are very popular, yet they have a limitation. Understanding the nutraceutic importance of flavonoids, there is a limitation of its absorption too. The figure here is depicting the flavonoid metabolism in humans. The figure on the right shows three channels, channel A, channel B, and channel C. In channel A, there is consumption through the mouth and there is excretion. In channel B, the foods which are to be absorbed, they are absorbed by the intestinal cells and thereafter, they are carried by the hepatic portal vein into the liver from where they are passed, passed into circulation. Those compounds that follow the, this pathway are bioavailable in nature, whereas those others which are shown to pass through the feces or undergo premature metabolism 1 or premature metabolism 2 are not bioavailable in nature. Most of the nutraceutic compounds have this limitation. Number one, either they are not absorbed by the intestinal cells at all, which means that they are passed away directly from the channel A and outside. This can be understood better from the left figure. Looking at the left figure, which is a schematic, it shows ingested flavonoids which are in the glucosidic form they enter the the gut where they undergo phase 1 metabolism which is partial deconjugation into a glyconics it is at this stage itself that they begin to undergo phase 2 metabolism in phase 2 metabolism there are sulfonation there is sulfonation and methylation as well as there are gluconosides which are formed of these flavonoids when these conjugates are formed, the flavonoids lose their bioactivity. However, 
these metabolites are still carried by the hepatic portal vein vein into the liver from where they are circulated into the blood turmeric also known as halti commonly known as halti is the golden herb it has many therapeutic properties which have been established in the indian traditional system the bioactive which is responsible for rendering turmeric a healing a healing component or a healing herb is curcumin curcumin is a polyphenol and all its therapeutic activity is attributed mainly to the chemical structure and distinct chemical physical and biological properties structurally cur curcumin has three important functionalities an aromatic orso methoxy phenolic group alpha beta unsaturated beta diketo moiety and a seven carbon linker if we keep in mind this structural the structure of curcumin we will be able to understand later on the limitation posed by them the importance of halti which is attributed to curcumin is because of its multifaceted healing properties it not only has antioxidant properties it is also reported to have antimicrobial anti hiv delayed onset muscle soreness anti inflammatory muscle regenerative properties anti cancer properties wound healing properties and anti diabetic properties halti or turmeric that wonder molecule that we've been using from centuries from centuries later on it was only a little later that as scientists we discovered that the bioactive component which is responsible for imparting all that nutraceutical character to the haldi is actually curcumin but did we know that there are limitations posed by curcumin too how did we how do we understand this the consumption of haldi milk in the indian traditional system is very common it is used as an anti inflammatory or as a curative for almost every disease in the indian household but have you ever noticed that when you put haldi in a glass of milk most of it only settles at the base it is only a maybe a 1% or even less than 1% that we are actually consuming in the body out of that 1% that actually goes inside the body through through the intestinal tract even that is not bioavailable to the body we have just seen previously the structure of a curcumin it has certain methoxy groups it is these methoxy groups the diketo groups which are lending it a hydrophobic character so much like the limonoids or the carotenoids even the curcumin is hydrophobic in nature so we may be thinking that we are consuming healthy we get, we are earning its benefits whereas we are earning the benefit of only 0.001% at that too may be a very high concentration of that little that haldi the curcumin that has been consumed it is further not bioavailable because there are no receptors for curcumin on the intestinal cells if there are no receptors it cannot be absorbed by the body so the only way for curcumin to go inside is through passive diffusion so whatever health benefits that we are reaping out of consumption of haldi is merely as a result of passive diffusion so therefore it is important to enhance its bioavailability by by changing it into an active form of diffusion these are certain limit, limitations which are posed even after even if a little bit of curcumin is taken inside the cells by passive diffusion it further undergoes a barrier in 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 bioavailability that barrier is that when it goes inside the cell it gets conjugated or it gets reduced by getting re reduced or by getting conjugated it further reduces or loses its bioactive properties therefore these limitations are posed by curcumin and as scientists we need to overcome those limitations in the next module we will see how nanotechnology helps us overcome these limitations posed by nutraceuticals although curcumin has been established to have a multitude of these nutraceutical properties yet it too suffers from certain limitations these limitations besides structural are also by the pathway of metabolism the figure in this slide depicts the metabolism of curcumin within the human body once consumed curcumin also undergoes conjugation into sulfates glucuronides and sulfoglucuronides 
which renders them less bioactive or sometimes completely inactive. On the other hand, it may also undergo reduction into dihydrocurcumins, tetrahydrocurcumins, hexahydrocurcumins, and hexahydrocurcuminols, which is a derivative of curcumin. The hexahydrocurcuminols further undergo, further metabolize into ferulic acid and dihydroferulic acid. Upon reduction, the dihydrocurcumins may further conjugate into DHC glucuronides, THC glucuronides, or HHC glucuronides, which are all again the inactive forms of curcumin. Therefore, it is understood from this that once curcumin conjugates or reduces, which is its normal, pheno normal phenomena within the body, it loses its bioactive character. Losing bioactivity also means that they are not being absorbed by the intestinal cells. The figure shown here depicts closely the enterocytes, which are intestinal, sign, in intestinal cells. The blue, green, and yellow triangles are the phenolic phytochemicals, the green and yellow ones in particular, the phase two metabolites of phenolic phytochemicals, which we have just understood previously, which are the conjugates. At the very first step, the phenolics do not have receptors on the intestinal cells, therefore they undergo passive diffusion. Second, whatever metabolites do find their way passively are not actively passed on into, into circulation, into blood circulation, because some of these are effluxed back into the intestine, which is depicted by the efflux reporters, uh, by the green, violet, and yellow arrows. Having understood the various important factors associated with nutraceutical compounds, followed by the limitations in their use in, for the human body, which, which details that though they have nutraceutic properties, yet we are unable to utilize those properties merely because of either their structural, structural limitations, which, are, which is imposing hydrophobicity, or because they do not have receptors on the intestinal cells. The question is, as food technologists, are there any technologies available which can encounter these limitations and make these compounds more bioavailable? If we are able to make these nutraceutical compounds more bioavailable, it simply means that they will be absorbed by the body and they will enter into circulation and their health benefits will be much more manifold. This also means that we will, for treatment purposes, we can give much lower doses of these nutraceutical components. Shown here in this image, are how nanotechnological interventions are being used in encountering these limitations. The green particles are nanoformulations or nanoparticles containing most of these nutraceutical compounds. In this figure particularly, it is showing flavonoid encapsulation. When we encapsulate flavonoids or any nutraceutics within a certain formulation and reduce its size into the nano range, its absorptivity increases. How does that happen? That happens by three processes. One, by active diffusion. The diffusion changes from passive to active. Two, by clavule-mediated enterocytosis. And three, by cl the clathrin-mediated endocytosis. What this means is that now it is not difficult for these nanoparticles to be absorbed by the intestinal cells they are becoming more friendlier to the cells and the friends and the cells do not efflux these molecules either and by doing so we are rendering value to the nutraceutical components in summary we have learned in this module the importance of nutraceuticals for health the various health benefits which are posed by different kinds of nutraceuticals we have seen how limonoids are highly anti-cancerous they are hepatoprotective how carotenoids are most potent uh, antioxidants, polyphenolic compounds like curcumins are anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer. 
but then we've also understood the limitations of the, in the use of these nutraceuticals, wherein in terms of structural limitations or absorption limitations, all these limitations inhibit the use of these nutraceuticals or in utilizing the properties of these nutraceuticals by the human body. To realize the therapeutic potentials of these nutraceuticals, nanotechnological interventions can help. How these nanotechnological interventions are used in this sector, let us see that in the next module. Thank you.